Hi my lovelies, it's Meeks here, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great weekend thus far. Happy Sunday. The weather in the UK has been amazing this weekend. It's February, but we are in double digits, Celsius double digits, which is incredibly rare. I'm seeing blue skies, no clouds, people have been flocking to the beaches. Even me, I've been outdoors embracing nature. I've taken a few walks, I went on a run. I'll tell you, the sun must have come and hit me differently because I don't do running. But <laughs> it's just been a fantastic weekend for the weather. It's very, very strange. Hoping it lasts and spring's arriving early and we don't get a second winter come out of nowhere. But this is the UK. Who knows? But yes, guys, happy Sunday. Today's topic is one that I've been meaning to do for so long. It has been on my list. One of my followers requested this as a topic and when I saw it, I thought that is a brilliant subject to speak on. I need to get around to doing it. So apologies, it's taken this long. What I'm going to be getting into today, what I would advise my younger self about love, relationships and dating. So you know this gonna be a good one. Some points I will thoroughly go into and explain, but some points they're quite self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna hit y'all with them and swiftly move on because I don't want this video to be an hour long. But before I get into all the juiciness and all the knowledge, if you're new here, welcome. Please hit that subscribe button and do not forget to ring that notification bell so you do not miss any of my future videos. Without further ado, let's get into this topic. Okay, so every relationship comes with a challenge. Growing up and trying to make the best out of relationships, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes was hard. Sometimes it was about giving, sometimes it was about taking. But truthfully though, being in a relationship when we were younger, it seemed like the best thing. It seemed like the ultimate of importance. We just wanted to be part of the process. And dating someone may have felt ideal because, you know, everyone was doing it. Looking back into my memories or reflecting on pictures of me with some of my old dates, some old boyfriends, there are things that I definitely would not do now. Mm -mm. Growing up, it's given me a better insight of what relationships actually mean, as in what they truly mean. So here are some of the things that I've learned along the way that I would be truly happy to share with the younger Meeks. One, sex and love, they are not one and the same. Two, anything that you chase runs away. And the more that you chase them, the faster they run. Do not call back that man who hasn't called you back. Get the message or wait for him to chase you. Three, some men, they will promise anything and anything to get laid, i.e. have sexual intercourse with you. Learn to read between the lines. Four, most women think clearly before sex, whereas most men think clearly after the sex. Evaluate people by their repeated actions, not their words. Six, we attract and repel people based on who we are. So if you do not like the men that you are repeatedly attracting, girl, you need to take a look at yourself. Take a good, honest look. Falling head over heels in a short period of time, whether that's first date, first week, first month, that's called infatuation. That is not real love. You cannot, cannot talk a man into commitment. There are high quality men of substance out there. Yes, they are out there. They're not some sort of magical unicorn. They do exist, but you have to become a high value, secure woman of substance to attract one. No, I'm not saying that you have to look like a supermodel out here, but you do need to have good grooming and a positive attitude. Girl, you gotta look good and your attitude has to be right. If you constantly have the mind frame that all men are idiots, all men are dicks, all men are jerks, then that will just repel the good ones and you're not gonna find a good one. 
predatory men prey on predatory women. What in Buddha's name was I talking about here? I meant to say, predatory men prey on insecure women. My bad, sorry guys. Just like how gold diggers prey on insecure men, it goes both ways. Do not give too much too soon, he will not appreciate that. Hence the words too soon. A man appreciates things that he gotta work for, you know. Cooking him a five course meal on date number three, all he's gonna do is wonder what is going on here? What is this woman selling? But in six months time, he will greatly appreciate that gesture and find it very endearing and sweet. If love isn't given freely, begging someone for it will only make them respect you less. All that will do, it will eat up your self-esteem and desperation will become part of your identity. No matter how much you insist that you are not desperate. Never cry over someone who ghosted you, girl. They done a massive favour by leaving your life. Trust me, good things will come. Know your worth. And if you don't know your worth, build your self-worth. An individual's appearance doesn't really amount to much in the long run. It's just initial attraction. I'm going to explain this one in a bit more depth because this one's kind of deep. Basically, this looks do not pay the bills. Personality in the long run has a much better perception than it does on good looks on a man to a woman. Or it should do. It's actually quite remarkable as we age how little women are influenced by physical looks. And all men should actually pay attention to this. It's much more important to be a valuable social partner than worry about your physical looks. Social intelligence, that's where it be at. That is what makes us go, yes. Guys who can make women laugh, act confidently around us, and communicate effectively around us, they are the ones that have the highest social status. Guys who show they can provide, take care of him and his business, what matters to him, and that's including me as his woman, are emotionally intelligent and treat you with respect. Those are the guys to go for. Trust me, there was times in my younger days... I wronged myself. I had a good boyfriend, we were stable. Unfortunately, I met someone who was on paper better looking than him. I was more attracted to him physically. And I decided to be dumb and risk my relationship because I just was infatuated with this person's looks. That did not end well at all. That person was a player. He thought I was stupid for leaving my relationship. He didn't want to take me seriously and he treated me like a dick. And to be honest, I was a dick. A guy could be good looking, but if he treats you like crap, you will never be in a happy, fulfilling relationship. And in circumstances like that, how could we even trust each other? I would rather have a guy that's focused on his business and has the emotional intelligence and social skills than a guy who's in the gym 24 seven and looks like he's on the cover of a magazine expecting me to be the alpha female because he's too busy worrying about how he looks. If your intuition is telling you it's not right, listen to that. Listening to your gut helps you avoid partners that are not good for you in the long term. Just think about it for a second. I'm sure that some of you watching this have stayed with someone way longer than you should have, could even still be with them now, when you knew right from the start that it wasn't going to work out. So what is the gut feeling? Your gut feeling, that's the sensation that you feel in your stomach, warning you that there's something to be careful about. Sometimes it's out of excitement and we call that butterflies, but other times, girl, that's a straight up warning. I mean, when you think about it, there is no such thing as a decision based on pure logic. Whenever you decide to do something, your brain relies on both logical thoughts and emotions. It's how you decide what you want to eat today. Your feelings could be saying, I really, really fancy a cheese burger for the fifth day in a row but then your logic says you know what I should eat healthy and then you base the decision based on that what to buy what business to start and what kind of relationship to get in the gut feeling is nothing but an instinct but it's an instinct that we use all the time the problem is that sometimes we choose to ignore that we get into these thought patterns and convince ourselves to do the opposite of what our instinct is actually telling us to do and you know what we're not even aware of the process that's actually undermining our own happiness do you want say a big wedding and your partner doesn't want one 
one. Do you want an expensive piece of jewellery but your partner doesn't want to buy it? Or do you want more time but your partner doesn't think you need it? Relationships, they are dependent on compromise but when you compromise a bit too much you're actually abandoning your own dreams and goals for the sake of someone else's aspirations for the future. So before you make a compromise it's important to realise exactly what you want. What does this gut tell you about this deal that you're about to make? What are you giving up and are those things worth giving up for a relationship? Learn to recognise psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissistic people, emotional and physical abusers and passive aggressive manipulators. They be present among us and they're sometimes in powerful and influential positions in their career and community. But just because they're powerful people doesn't mean they're good people. Just know that and trust your gut. If something in your gut tells you that you are not comfortable with a man, run. Date around. Dating around allows you to compare and also figure out what type of significant other has the perfect chemistry to match with you. Many people dive into a relationship because they find someone attractive and as I've already said, attractiveness is only part of the equation. You need to be with someone who you vibe with emotionally. So go on a lot of dates and, you know, the people who you feel yourself vibing with a lot, ask yourself why. And that helps you start to figure out exactly what your deal breakers are. And that helps you figure out exactly what you do want and don't want in a relationship and a partner. Spend more time on yourself. Spend more time eating right, exercising right, less time drinking, unless it's that H2O. Don't put everything into your relationship. Save some time for you. Don't lose yourself in a relationship. Love your partner fiercely but always follow your unique dreams and your desires. Just be true to yourself because the truth is your relationship with yourself that is the most important relationship in your life and it's also the foundation of any other relationship that you have. So it makes sense to prioritise it and nurture it. If you love someone more than yourself, you will always compromise too much, you will ignore all the red flags, get hurt and lose yourself in relationships. You cannot love in a healthy way if you do not love yourself first. The love for yourself will help set stronger boundaries in relationships, protect yourself and give you the courage to walk away from any relationship that isn't serving you. Establish a strong foundation whilst you are single. This is still on the topic of loving yourself. We lose ourselves in relationships because we do not feel worthy of love and our boundaries are weak. When you love yourself, you know how you want to feel and be in your next relationship. You also set healthy boundaries that prevents from losing yourself in a relationship. So it's really, really important. Don't try to be what you think the guy or girl wants you to be. You need to be able to attract someone to the authentic you. Your self-worth is not determined by your relationship status and you need to be happy with yourself before you can be happy in any relationship. You cannot get your self-esteem through another person in a relationship. It has to come from within. This might be a long stretch but you are not who you will be in 10 years time from now. So look for someone who reflects what you want to be and that might not necessarily be who you are now. Let me explain that. So they say your partner is a reflection of yourself and the two of you combined will eventually lead to you mirroring certain aspects of each other. So try and find someone who inspires you to be a better you. Someone who has similar ambitions and a sense of direction in life. Morals that you agree with. Try to find somebody that's on your wavelength or the wavelength that you both aspire to be in future. Personally, I like my man to be some sort of mentor to me. Someone that I look up to that I can ask for advice on certain things. Ask yourself, in two years time, five years time, ten years time, will I still see myself with this person as they are now? The grass is not always greener on the other side. Right, social media can fuel this by presenting not realistic, but idealistic views of people, settings, situations, 
the perfect life, the perfect life, the perfect picture, the great vacation, the endearing relationship that's portrayed through a lens but isn't all the time, in fact probably not most of the time, even accurate. When you are constantly bombarded with images of other couples who seem on the surface, to be totally smitten, leading picture-perfect lives. It can be tempting to compare your own relationship to these idealistic standards, all the while ignoring the contextual realities of your relationship. Seeing images of perfect couples on social media, that can be a catalyst for reflecting on your own relationship and questioning how well things are really going, which can be productive if you're willing to communicate with your partner about any any potential concerns. More often though, let's be honest, seeing these idealistic portrayals of relationships can skew our perceptions of what's actually good in our relationships. It's easy to forget that smiling for a picture doesn't mean that these other couples don't argue, have awkward moments or hurt each other. They just don't put those moments on display for us to see. So it's important to remind ourselves that while those theoretical options could be better, they could also be worse. Especially since you can only see the surface in most cases. So work on appreciating your partner and your relationship. And bear in mind, as the saying goes, before you play one person for another, you better make sure the sub can make the same plays your all-star can. You could cost yourself the game. And don't assume your needs will be met. Ask for what you want or need. Remember, nobody is a mind reader. And the only person that is responsible for ensuring that you get your needs met, or for ending a relationship if they're not being met, is you. Making assumptions is common in relationships, but it's also what leads to conflict. Many people in relationships just assume that the other person knows what they mean and what they want. But most of the time, this is not the case. I've learned that if I want something, I have to communicate it in a very clear way to my partner. So yeah, guys, that's it. In summary, get experience before settling down. Don't just settle because you're lonely. Do you know that loneliness is actually an integral part of life and it helps you build character? Once you commit to a relationship, constantly be monitoring your deal breakers and communicate those instead of building resent. And if the relationship isn't going to work, then it won't work. There's plenty of other people that are out there for you. You just gotta find them. I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I hope that you got some tips. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments box if there's anything that you want to add, if there's something you don't agree on. Let me know. I'm very, very interested to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate it so, so much and it helps me out a lot. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Ring that little bell so you're not missing any of my future videos. And thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Take care, lovelies.